this is one of those like i will take this to to the day i die in terms of how he explained financial planning number one maximize income number two minimize expenses number three invest number four protect the investments number five optimize lifestyle I think everyone understands number one and number three. They just have no idea how to do number two. I mean, they know how to go number two, but I'm just saying, right? Like, it, it's one thing in terms of like, yeah, hey, I just cut the cable. Whoop the fucking do. I mean, realistically, it's like that hundred dollars a month for the for the circle that we're in. They're not going to give a shit about a hundred bucks a month, right? But if you're saying like. Hey, I was just able to change your budget five thousand dollars a month. Okay, that perks that that's going to perk my ears up. How did you do that? Yeah. How did, how did you? I mean, literally, I just did this, and again, because of my my background with dentists, I've been helping a number of dentists with what I do, and I can go through the details of this case. But this is someone, their family, the budget is fifteen thousand five hundred dollars per month in terms of living. We haven't even started the system yet. We just got everything rearranged. Same exact lifestyle. Right. I'm not, I'm not telling them to change a thing about their lifestyle will now cost $10,000 a month simply right. because of rearranging the debt. You know, and it, it's, it's funny. Yeah. There, there's a lot of people that like to shit on, uh, you know, Gen Z. And there's this meme that I've seen going around the financial circles that's a pushback to people shitting on Gen Z. And it said, uh, you know what would make me more rich than giving up my $7 a day in coffee? Not being in third grade in 2008 and being able to buy a house. And it's like so true, right? Like like you, you and I actually, we, we were talking about this on uh, the mastermind that we are in. We are like, you know, it's really hard because the last 15 years since 2008, you look like a genius if you invested in anything. Mobile home parks, gold, the stock market, real estate, pork bellies, apartment syndicates, new construction. It doesn't matter. Like you look like a freaking genius if you just happen to be coming of an age at a time when assets were cheap and assets were on this parabolic like uh, 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 trajectory just up and up and up, you know? And uh, I've got a buddy who he's like, oh, the best thing that happened to me ever in the history of my life is I was accidentally born at a time where I came out of college in 2009, went into the mortgage industry, and it was just 13 years of straight up, lower interest rates, more production, and I was able to buy five or six investment properties quickly, and I'm gonna retire at 45. And I'm like, kudos to you, you did an awesome job, you did all the right things, and there was a piece in there that was like super well-timed, where he didn't have to do number two and keep his expenses low, because money just kept coming in. And so now that we're in a totally different economy, we're filming this August of 2023, this will probably come out about October of 2023 because we're ahead of schedule and recording. It's like a lot of people don't know how to do number two. They are a little too cocky about what they think they're number three, which is invest. And they've never had to protect because if you've only been an adult investing over the last 15 years since 2008, it's been nothing but ups. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I just wanted to rant there or if there's a question in that, but I think you get my point. No, I totally get your point. Absolutely. And I and I want to clarify one other thing because you mentioned Dave Ramsey. I am not the Dave Ramsey poster child. I do not say everyone has to be debt free because being debt free does not mean that you're expense free. The only time you're expense free is when you're dead. I mean, right. I mean so I'm not I'm not asking for that for anyone. Hey, this quick interruption is brought to you by me, Scott Groves, the host of the On the Edge podcast. This podcast is brought to you by me. Uh, I'm a loan officer who can help you with a mortgage in all 50 states across the United States. I also coach loan officers. So if you are a home buyer who's looking to get a mortgage, if you're a realtor who's looking to partner with an awesome loan officer, or if you're a loan officer looking for coaching, get in touch with me. It's those sources of revenue that allow us to produce this podcast and get out a new episode to you every week for the last couple of years. So if you're looking for a mortgage, if you're looking for a mortgage lender to partner with, or you're looking for a mortgage coach, I'm your guy. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming.